everybody, I'm Boaz Faller, I'm an evolutionary astrologer, and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between August 25th and September 1st, 2018. Just came back from a cruise in the Norwegian fjords. It was amazing. Highly recommend it. And I noticed some people angry. Angry for questions they've asked or emails they've sent and I haven't replied. Didn't even have an ability to reply people um, with comments on my videos, which were scheduled uh, to appear and did appear. But I couldn't even answer these because connectivity was very limited. It cost a lot to connect on the ship. And even the ship can't connect in the fjords. There's no satellite connection. So, if you're still waiting for, me, for an answer from me, I'm begging for your forgiveness and I'll get through all these mails and answer you very shortly with some help from the force. <laughs> this is a busy weekend. We're having an OPA, uh, the Organization for Professional Astrology in Israel, uh, meet up with some good lectures and actually very very nice let's talk about the time we're having I know a lot of people feel exhausted and worn out we've talked a lot about this Mars retrograde which is finally at its ending stages through this week Mars is going to turn direct and start moving forward we'll still be in the shadow up to October of this retrograde but things are getting better however Venus the female counterpart in the sky is heading into a, a retrograde movement herself and she's suffering some uneasy aspects along this week so on the one hand this week is amazing for business this week is great for career this is a good week to pull through all these challenges and struggles that we've been handling, that have been on our shoulders, in our backpacks, burdening us down through these last few months. This has been tiresome for some of us in our relationships, for some of us with our families, for some of us at work, for some of, of us with our creativity or our children, some, for some of us with our health. This, however, is not the time to give up. And if you do not give up, this would be a memory and a result that will go on and strengthen you throughout the next few months. So, if you're listening to this, don't give up now. I know you feel tired. I know all you want to do is just rest. And... I want you to be mindful of all the kinds of acting out that we can, first of all, <laughs> exemplify ourselves and secondly, see around us at this time because this is a frustrating time, because this is a hard time for many people, uh, us included, you know, we're all swimming in the soup at some level, uh, at some point of our lives. Um, then we can ask for emotional compensation in many different emotionally childish ways and act out. We can act out in our relationship, we can act out sexually, we can act out with food or drink. We can just be intolerable because we're so upset with something that we can't even phrase. So just observe it, you know, be aware of it. Understand the beast's dance within you. Don't shun it out because shunning it out is just like hugging it and accepting it fully. It's that stance from afar that is needed to give you some measurement between that carnal animalistic part of ourselves and the more logical, redrawn, higher part of our mind. <clears throat> So, if we don't give up, if we actually pull things through, if we take a deep breath and actually 
go through things one step at a time, baby steps. Again, Donovan, soundtrack of Brother, Sun, Sister, Moon. Do few things and do them well. Take your time, go slowly. Step by step, stone by stone, you'll find heaven's glory. Humble beginnings, greater end. That's the simple story. I'm making up words, I guess. But this is a beautiful soundtrack. Look it, look it up on, on YouTube. And I love Donovan's words for all those songs that he has on the soundtrack. It tells the story of St. Francis. It's my father's favorite film. And it was filmed by Franco Zeffirelli over a decade. Can you imagine that? He was waiting for the right... Um, bloom in the meadow, uh, the right winter scene, and so on and so forth. And back then it was all in film. You can see it on YouTube as well, by the way. So let's go down to the weekdays uh, now. So the 25th, I mean, both this Saturday and the next Saturday have a thing about indiscretion and intactfulness and saying too much too soon or uh, not the right way. So just or, or overdoing it somehow. <clears throat> so just watch it. Other than that, this Saturday is a great day to step out of the ordinary uh, and, and do something new and enjoy yourselves. Everything connected to beauty, aesthetics, music, art, people, relationships, love is favored on this Saturday. There's a grand trine in the sky between the Sun and Saturn and Uranus. It's a good time to bring innovative subjects into your daily routine. Things that can pleasure you and satisfy you and become part of who you are. The 26th, uh, there's the full moon in Pisces. Uh, Native Americans used to call it the sturgeon moon or green corn moon or, uh, or grain moon. <clears throat> and it was a time of great fruitfulness. And this is a very fruitful time astrologically if we're talking about business, career, pulling things that are of strategic value to us and have an essence of maturity and responsibility and withstanding our own rules, regulations, and the tests of time. Um, so, as I said, don't give up. Do pull through the, through this time and do it step by step and stone by stone. Um, you will get help from the universe if you do that. You will get help from the universe if you do that. However, this full moon, I mean the 25th is a 24th, 25th, they are all build up energetically. We can feel it as a ch charged days, you know, energetically. And the 26th is the peak. Sky formation in astrology is considered very lucky and protectful. It, 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 it actually takes the, the tension of the opposition away through the trines and sextiles into a very cooperative and lucky formation. So we have this grand trine between the Sun and Saturn and Uranus and it sextiles the Moon. So it's really a time that we can combine our efforts and our needs into the greater stream of things. This is a time that we should listen to the ether, listen to our hearts, listen to the universe, listen to God. I don't care who you listen to. Just don't listen to me. Listen to yourself. This is a good time to do that. And this is a good time to softly lay foundations for a more satisfying healthier, positive life. Um, however, as I said, Venus, which is in charge of satisfaction, satisfaction from our love relationships, partners, uh, sensuality, body, self-worth, money, income, assets, 
is under great turbulence at this moment. Things can change. The way you uh, earn your income can change. You, we can have fights uh, with our business partners. We could have fights with our intimate partners, be too dramatic about things. Things can be found out that change how the game is played. And we need to keep things in proportions. We need to understand that this is a very turbulent time. And as I said to a student over the phone two days back, I told him, look, everybody's feeling worn out. And what we should be keeping reminding ourselves right now is, you know, like, like that old wise seafaring uh, uh, sailor holding the helm of the ship through the storm like a mantra in his head. The storm has a phase. Fair winds, fair winds, the cries of seagulls and bright blue skies will be heard again. My job through this storm is to keep my ship as intact as possible, as on course as possible. We cannot be absolved from the storm, but we can cut our way through it, as the Japanese samurai say, like a sword in water. So, make sure that you hold on and remember, fair winds, the cries of seagulls, in amazingly bright blue skies, will be heard again. Our job through the storm is to keep the ship intact as much as we can. And ourselves in the process. Are we not the ship? Are we different than the oceans around us and not part of the cry of the seagull in the bright blue sky? Yes. Um, so that full moon is an energetic peak. It's, it's a good time. And revelations can come through listening in, not necessarily through acting out. The 27th is a great day to go out. It's a great day to take, you know, easy, easy. If you can make it an easy day that you can pleasure yourself or just, you know, hang out and lay back, or go out to nature or do something artistic or spiritual. It's a great day for that. It's not such a good day for trying to deal with the real world. You know, it could be frustrating. It's the day that Mars is going to turn direct. It's a bad day in that sense. Watch yourselves on the roads as well. Um, but the moon is conjunct Neptune. and It's trining Jupiter. It is also Queen Kong sing Mercury. So go out, enjoy yourselves, and have fun. But if your idea of having fun is uh, having unprotected sex or uh, drinking yourself till you're totally drunk or doing anything else that you know is not very positive for you, then don't do the same mistakes all over again. Um, take care of yourself. But... Give yourself the benefit of enjoying yourself, if you can, on Monday. Tuesday, the 28th. Just remember, I'm talking about Central European times. East Coast USA move it nine hours <coughs> back, and West Coast 11 hours. And if you are in the Pacific, move it about 10 hours forward. Um, Tuesday, the 28th. Be aware of indiscretion and intactfulness. Um, from the afternoon onwards, there's a lot of energy. If you can go to the gym or have some uh, athletic activity, it's a good time to have it on that afternoon of Tuesday. It's a very sensitive day. The moon does conjunct Chiron on that day. Be mindful of that. Wednesday, build up of energy. Uh, again, I'm sorry. It's not a buildup of energy, it's a down-creasing of energy um, to a feeling of being a little lonely or, or judging oneself or other people a little too harshly. Be careful with how you communicate through that day. And Thursday, 
really be careful of fights. The moon is conjunct Aries, the goddess of mischief and fights. She who presented things in an undiplomatic manner is how they were, but they were too uncomfortable to swallow. So diplomacy is needed, especially within relationship through this day. Don't over-dramatize things. Don't um, make a mountain out of a molehill on Thursday the 30th. Friday the, 30, the 31st, from the afternoon, things chill down and relax. After that, up to that time, be careful to, of especially lashing out or aggression. Um, however, from the afternoon on, on, uh, on Friday, that means that it's Friday morning for you Americans and Saturday morning for you Australians. There is a trine between the sun and the moon and Saturn. Um, and it's a beautiful time. It's a great time. It's a, it's a nice time to spend with family. It's a nice time to spend with elderly. And it's a good time for your job or career. I know this is, is over the weekend, but we can enjoy it uh, even through the days before. And Saturday, the first, as I said before, indiscretion, tactfulness uh, is needed on that day. Indiscretion is uh, a problem on that day. And we could, our egos could be elevated. We could uh, be too confident in that day. So just watch it and don't be overindulgent as well. So, uh, two people have contacted me so far about the English group we're setting up. We need two more if you want to join us. Uh, so contact me and of course for private consultations or any question you might have about astrology. I'm Boaz Fader. I'm wishing you an amazing week. Take care and goodbye.